Um, I certainly am. Um, if I were to title what I'm going to talk about today, it would be called uh, Turning the Tide. I, I can see you today, which is awesome. Um, when I think of Turning the Tide, I think of uh, Paul, um, Paul the Apostle. Um, his story, uh, he wrote most of the New Testament, not all of the New Testament, but all of the New Testament. No, but most of the New Testament, not all of it. Um, his story actually starts in the book of Acts, Acts 9. Um, where he was actually knocked off his horse um, and the scales were removed from his eyes. But before that, he was, he was at the stoning of Stephen, which was, um, Stephen was a Christian. Um, he was a follower of Jesus, not exactly a disciple, but um, a devout follower of Jesus. And Paul was at the stoning of him. And Paul was a very, he was like a rich, very rich kind of, um, very uppity kind of person. If you look at Philippians, I think it's Philippians 1, he gives his uh, resume. I think it's Philippians. Um, yeah, he gives his resume. He's like, I, I, I was under this teacher. And I did all this and I did all that. He was a very learned man he he was a very well educated man very well educated spoke five languages um he was like uh at the top of his game uh when the lord literally knocked him off of his horse and then after the lord knocked him off of his his horse um, he began preaching the gospel, and that's when persecution began. He was he was jailed, and he was in he was persecuted several times. But in the midst of being persecuted, um, he got such revelation, and he was Paul was what would be considered today a traveling pastor. Um, he was probably what we would consider today a campus pastor. Um, but he did, no, he was probably a senior pastor. And what he would do is go to a town, set up a church, teach for a bit, install a campus pastor to lead over that home church and then go to the next town and um, uh, um, intermittently he would write letters to I to the churches that he started so um, so he would start a church and then leave and then write that church a letter to see how they were were doing. Or I guess he got reports from the campus pastors or the ministry team that he installed for the church um, before he moved on. And... And he was jailed many times for preaching the gospel. And um, until one, one day, 
he was in jail for the last time when he wrote Timothy. He was a really old man. He'd been a Christian for years at this point. And he said, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. And and after, shortly after he wrote Timothy, um, Second Timothy, I believe he was beheaded, although I'm not sure of that, but I believe he, Paul was uh, beheaded. Um, and as I was thinking of the story of Paul, sorry for, sorry for my kind of haphazard retelling of it, um, as I was thinking about the story of Paul, I was thinking about uh, turning the, the tide and, and a human's ability to turn things around. He was a guy that was um, known for persecuting Christians and killing them. And he turned out to be the greatest apostle ever. And he, di he died for the, for the faith. So I said all that to say, um, at on any day, you can turn the tide. Freedom is just one decision away. Um, freedom and bondage in the at the crossroads, the crossroads of freedom and bondage is a decision. Freedom is here, bondage is here. So, and in between them is a decision. You can make the decision to go this way and that way. It's up to no one but you. Um, God can, once you make that decision, God can help you. He can stir you to make that decision. But he, he cannot make the decision for you because that would, um, he does not usurp your free will. Um, so you have to make the decision whether to turn the tide or to, or to stay where you currently are. In this pandemic of COVID and all the violence that it has been going on, we have a choice. We can either choose life or choose death. I'll say what I said before again. In the midst of, of death and life, Life and death is a decision. You're one decision away from freedom. You're one decision away from bondage. And when I say bondage, I mean emotional bondage. Um, I mean spiritual bondage. I mean all of that. Um, you don't have to stay where you are. Your emo, your um, your situation, your physical situation may not change, but your but your mindset has to change. Um, and when your mindset changes, your phys physical situation will gradually change, um, because. Um, the Lord says, uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What we need to ask God for to turn the tide from rocky to smooth is a change of mindset. We don't need to ask him for a change of situation because our, situa our physical situation can change, but our mindsets 
if our mindset does not change, it'll it'll just go back to where it was. Okay, to make this clearer, because I'm kind of fudging this up. Um, okay, let's say if you were a spender and you somebody loaned you money to get out of debt and you use that money for your credit card you got out of debt but when you get got out of debt instead of coming up with a plan to stay out of debt you got into more debt so your physical situation of debt has changed but your mindset of getting out of debt did not change. So a lot of people are still in uh, emotional situations, emotional mindsets because um, because they haven't changed their mind. When you change your mind, the physical aspects of your life will change. So going back to debt again, um, let's say you were, let, let's say you um, didn't get out of debt. It was so bad, but while you were in debt, you learned how to save you read books on how to economize your money, how to um, how to invest your money wisely, and how to um, make your money go further. So you're still in debt, but while you're in debt, you're working your mind out of it, out of it. So. So when you physically get out of it, you'll stay out of it. See, it's not about your physical situation changing. Changing, oftentimes, it's about your mindset changing. When you have a mindset change, your physical situation will gradually change. Like, there, there, is, there is no surprise to me that when a baby comes out, they come out with their head first. See, a lot of people do not use their head first. They use their emotions first. And when you, you use your um, emotions are necessary, um, and it's a balance between your head and emotions, but when you're th thinking of, um, when you're looking at a situation, it's important to first use your head. And a lot of Christians haven't been taught to use their head. They haven't been taught to be, um, to use their ingen ingenuity and their brain and they're just looking for oh god please help me to do this and please help me to do that uh he has helped you he's given you the raw materials and you get get to um pray for understanding about how to use them i remember talking i remember watching uh, the creator of Veggie Tales, which is a Christian kids um, cartoon and series and books and videos um, with talking vegetables and they teach kids about the love of Christ, talking uh, fruit and vegetables. Um, I remember the guys, um, the head saying, um, the CEO saying that he was in debt, he was like broke, him and his wife were struggling and 
they're, they're like, what what are we going to do? And like, this is just crazy. How are we going to get out of debt? And he said, one day he was at his computer um, looking at an apple and an orange, uh, I think an apple and a celery, thinking, what are we going to do? And Veggie Tales came to him. Um, this series of books and uh, videos for children of talking vegetables who love the Lord. And up until today, it is one of the biggest selling series ever. Now, he doesn't own it anymore. But um, he started it and that got him out of debt. See, his head got him out of debt. Um, the ability for God to use his gifting for illustration or whatever, that got, got him out of debt. So you're praying, oh Lord, how am I going to get out of debt? How am I going to get out of a relationship? How am I going to get this? But I, I can almost guarantee you that you already have what you need. You just have to use, um, ask God for the wisdom on how, how to use it. So that thing that you've been tinkering, tinkering with, um, that could um, uh, give you a leg up on how to uh, use your ingenuity and that thing can get you out of debt. The fact that you're writing songs in your bathroom or in the shower uh, can, can be your key to be a songwriter and have songs that, that um, not, on, not only can benefit you financially, but can change people's lives around the world or can, can cause people to think differently around the world. The Lord said, the Lord constantly says to me, what's in your hand? Stop praying for miracles to go poof, uh, just like that. Look around, what's in your hand? What's in your hand that can turn your tide around, that can calm your seas, that can do all that? Um, God can work miracles, he does. But oftentimes, the miracle is a combo of you and God working together to um, bring you into your destiny. Sometimes the miracle is just God, but oftentimes he wants you to use your head to turn this tide. And if you want ties to, tides to turn, you have to make some decisions that will that will that will cause the tide to turn. Gone are the days where we can just pray, God, turn this tide. What are the decisions that we need to make um, to uh, to allow the tide to turn? Often God works with us to um, make our destiny happen. And something just occurred to me um, because um, when thinking of George Floyd and all the murders in the States um, having to do with uh, violence and in Canada too, I remember years ago, um, every weekend, it was about 2004 or five. Uh, we had gang violence every weekend, someone getting shot in Toronto, right here. So, we're all praying, God, uh, just stop this and whatever. But something just occurred to me. 
He's given us the tools to stop it. He's given us the wherewithal to stop it. So if we put put our ingenuity and our ideas on on his um on what he does working together with God we can turn the tide uh we can uh help change um minds and hearts and and all that stuff only God can change your mind and heart but he will use our brain to do it um we need to come up with um uh programs in different ways to deal with the anger of a generation see i i think um there's a lot of anger there's a lot of um mistrust on both sides there's a lot of things that we haven't yet dealt with and i think until we deal with those issues i we we won't see change and we expect god to just do it poof but he's not going to do it he's going to work with us to help get it done you know he can do it by himself but he won't do it by himself cuz he wants us to know what we have in us beloved what you have in you is so great you are born in the image of god you were he breathed into you he said he breathed into man and man became a living soul when i say man i mean man and woman um so what we're looking for is not in the government is not in it's not even god it's in us as the everyday people what do we need to do to um to deal with that anger and i was thinking if i sat down with uh leaders like uh Donald Trump and and uh um Justin Trudeau and asked them um what was your home life like what was your family like what did they teach you did you see a black person come um to your home did you see a spanish person come how did your father treat women like how did did you talk about diversity in your home because uh we as people have the mistaken assumption that because somebody is an adult they learn these things they learn how to get along with everybody but sometimes they don't they don't they were never taught and i'm not saying they can never be taught but sometimes they weren't taught and so, and i think sometimes when we understand where our political leaders and where our spiritual leaders are coming from we don't have to agree but we can better empathize with them and and we can offer to teach them what they don't know because not because of somebody's title like prime minister or president they know all this stuff they can they know how to deal with this stuff or they know how to lead properly sometimes they need to be taught just like everyone else and i think it's up to us as a society to understand uh the power we have the power we have in Christ but the power we have standing together as a people as human beings as 
black people, white people, Hispanic people, uh, gay people, straight people, whatever people. We need to understand who we are and whose we are. And when we understand that, the tide will turn. And I don't believe it's hopeless. I believe that humans started this crap about racism and, and colorism and genderism and whatever. So humans can fix it. Humans started it. God didn't start it. Humans started it so humans can fix it. And there's a lot of anger. There's a lot of anger on both sides. There's a lot of blame on both sides. There's a lot of hurt on both sides, which we need to talk about. And we need to um, cipher through, siphon through, and we, we need to, as a society, learn how to speak to each other, learn how to have conversation with each other. When we do that, the tide will turn and change is possible. Change is possible. It's not hope, hopeless. But it just takes a little, little ingenuity, a little thought. It just takes us saying, you know what? Enough. Enough of shooting, enough of killing. And it's not easy. It it took oh it took um we were in we as black people in the states and Canada racism was here as well not for not for as long as the states but it was here and it took we were in slavery for about four hundred years in North America but it's and um. In America, it was um, uh, the civil rights movement after that. And, like, it never really went away. It just changed forms. It just cha changed from bolts and whips and chains to working out in the, and working out in the field to separate washrooms, separate schools, separate this and separate that. We've never really dealt with the issues as a culture, as society, and other cultures don't really understand the issues because they have never experienced them. They can feel sorry and feel sympathy, but they've never really been educated on what it was like um, to not even use the same bathroom together to not even go to the restaurant together. And now that we can, sometimes, sometimes people still have the vestiges of it and they don't know. And sometimes it is their fault and sometimes they just need to be ed educated. We just need to sit down and have a conversation. And um, be open to listen to each other. We don't have to agree with each other, but we just need to be open to the possibility of change. Because sometimes biases are really, um, really ingrained, and we don't even know that we have biases. Um, we don't even know we have misconceptions. I was talking um, about, um, to someone about their child with a disability, and it's a disability, not my disability, CP. It was another one, and I said something totally uh, wrong, but and I didn't even know that it was totally wrong, and she and the person corrected me, and uh, and another time. I was having a conversation with two people and the same the same thing happened and they corrected me. And I didn't even know that I had those biases. So sometimes 
we have biases and we don't even know. We don't even know we have them and we're not bad people, but we just don't know and we just we just think that this is right and it's not. So we just need to sit with each other and be open to listen to each other and be open to be enlightened uh, for each other's point of view. That's when this will change. When this is not just a black problem or white problem. When this is a human problem and we all get outraged, I think this will change. And when we all start speaking up about uh, these issues of inequality, regardless of the culture, that's when that will change. Change is possible. Change is possible. It will just take work to change. It will just take laying down ourselves to a newer and deeper understanding of who the other person is. Thanks guys so much. Bye. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. And Thanks guys, see you tomorrow.